Morning. This is my second attempt. I thought I'd recorded everything and clearly I didn't. There is nothing worse than recording the same service in its entirety two or three times. It's infuriating. <coughs> anyway, good morning. Welcome to our morning prayer on Monday the 17th. Uh, great to have you join us. So we're going to use our daily prayer app. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy, slow to anger and of great kindness. He'll not always accuse us, neither will he keep his anger forever. He's not dealt with us according to our sins, nor rewarded us according to our wickedness. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his mercy upon those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he set our sins from us. As a father has compassion on his children, so is the Lord merciful towards those who fear him. For he knows of what we are made, he remembers that we are but dust. Our days are but as grass, we flourish as a flower of the field. For as soon as the wind goes over it, it is gone, and its place shall know it no more. For the merciful goodness of the Lord is from of old and endures for ever on those who fear him and his righteousness on children's children, on those who keep his covenants and remember his commandments to do them. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. So the night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. So there's just the one psalm, it's Psalm 71. It's a bit long, uh, but it's not too bad. But I'm going to omit the refrain. In you, O Lord, do I seek refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your righteousness, deliver me and set me free. Incline your ear to me and save me. Be for me a stronghold to which I may ever resort. Send out to save me. For you are my rock and my fortress. Deliver me, O oh my God, from the hand of the wicked, from the grasp of the evildoer and the oppressor. For you are my hope, O oh Lord God, my confidence, even from my youth. Upon you have I leaned from my birth, when you drew me from my mother's womb. My praise shall be always of you. I have become a portent to many, but you are my refuge and my strength. Let my mouth be full of your praise and your glory all the day long. Do not cast me away in the time of old age. Forsake me not when my strength fails. For my enemies are talking against me, and those who lie in wait for my life take counsel together. They say, God has forsaken him. Pursue him and take him, because there is none to deliver him. O oh God, be not far from me. Come quickly to help me, O oh my God. Let those who are against me be put to shame and disgrace. Let those who seek to do me evil be covered with scorn and reproach. But as for me, I will hope continually and will praise you more and more. My mouth shall tell of your righteousness and salvation all the day long, for I know no end of the telling. I will begin with the mighty works of the Lord God. I will recall your righteousness, yours alone. O oh God, you have taught me since I was young, and to this day I tell of your wonderful works. Forsake me not, O oh God, when I am old and grey-headed, till I make known your deeds to the next generation and your power to all that are to come. Your righteousness, O oh God, reaches to the heavens the great things you have done, who is like you, O God? 
what troubles and adversities you have shown me, and yet you will turn and refresh me and bring me from the deep of the earth again. Increase my honour, turn again and comfort me. Therefore will I praise you upon the harp for your faithfulness, O my God. I will sing to you with a lyre, O Holy One of Israel. My lips will sing out as I play to you, and so will my soul, which you have redeemed. My tongue also will tell of your righteousness all the day long, for they shall be shamed and disgraced who sought to do me evil. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Uh, Old Testament is 1 Samuel 24, so if you want to pause, maybe catch up with that, and then come back to us. And I'm going to skip the canticle and go straight on to the New Testament, which is Acts 3, verse 11 to the end. While he clung to Peter and John, all the people ran together to them in the portico, portico called Solomon's portico, utterly astonished. When Peter saw it, he addressed the people. You Israelites, why do you wonder at this, or why do you stare at us, as though by our own power or piety we had made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors, has glorified his servant Jesus whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the Holy and Righteous One and asked to have a murderer given to you. And you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses. And by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of you all. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfills what he had foretold through all the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord, and that he may send the Messiah appointed for you, that is, Jesus, who must remain in heaven until the time of universal restoration that God announced long ago through his holy prophets. Moses said, The Lord your God will raise up for you from your own people a prophet like me. You must listen to whatever he tells you, and it will be that everyone who does not listen to that prophet, will be utterly rooted out from the people. And all the prophets, as many have spoken from Samuel and those after him, also predicted these days. You are the descendants of the prophets and of the covenant that God gave to your ancestors, saying to Abraham, and in your descendants all the families of the earth shall be blessed. When God raised up his servant, he sent him first to you, to bless you, by turning each of you from your wicked ways. And I always encourage anybody watching this to reread actually the scriptures and just invite the Holy Spirit just to illuminate something actually and allow the voice of the Holy Spirit to speak. And I think the thing that stood out for me, particularly the first time of reading this, um, was that bit about rejection and about how the people and actually the rulers rejected the sent one of God. And I guess my thinking was around what parts of our lives have we rejected Christ? We might say Christ is our saviour, but is he Lord of all parts? Because he's Lord and saviour, not just saviour. And I guess it's allowing the Holy Spirit to speak and just illuminate something in our lives where we haven't allowed Jesus to be Lord. He's Saviour, but is he Lord of all parts of our life? And so I encourage you just to pause, to pray, 
to invite the Holy Spirit just to highlight that part of our life where Jesus isn't yet Lord. So we're going to pray. I'm going to pray through some hour of our prayer requests as given in the Allen Chapel, which I'm just catching up from from the other week. And the first one is actually a, a good one. Um, I mean, sadly, many of you will have heard that the really evangelical church has shut down and Jason has resigned from his post as their pastor. And of course, the impact of that is not only on them as, as a family, Jason and his wife, um, but obviously those in the community who relied on that food bank. And of course, the, the elders of that church denomination in our town. So let us pray for them. Lord, we pray for Pastor Jason and his wife. Lord, as, as they come to, I guess, terms with having to relocate back to Birmingham. Father, to discern your good and perfect will. We pray for them. That, Lord, you would bless them. Father, in this season of transition, may they know your good and perfect will. Father, would you direct them? Lord, would you carry and would you refresh them? And would you lead them by your spirit? We pray for all those who benefited from the food bank and for those who volunteered for that food bank. Father, be with them. Father, direct them likewise for those who served in that food bank, that, Lord, there may be other avenues in which they may serve our community. And for those who benefited from that food bank, help them to know where to go for the right help. And Lord, for those in charge of making decisions about the future of that expression of church in our community, Father, give them real wisdom and vision, we pray. And then other prayers. Lord, we pray for Paul recovering from a major operation and for his family, his wife and two boys and also his sister. Father, but for Paul, we pray, Lord, for a speedy recovery from this operation. Father, for a complete success. And Lord, he may indeed be singing your praise in the coming weeks and months. Lord, we pray for Debbie, who's fighting cancer again. Lord, would you be with her as she goes through treatments? And Lord, for a husband who I know is struggling with this, be close to them, we ask. Lord, this prayer simply says that Ben will be filled with the Holy Spirit and come to know Jesus. And we just say amen to that prayer. And we pray for Peggy, who sadly said goodbye to their daughter last week at a funeral. We pray that you continue to comfort this family. Father, they may know your peace and your presence. Amen. And a moment of silence, we just bring others who we know and other prayers that God has laid on our hearts before God. So Lord, we thank you that we can bring all these our prayers before you. A merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And shall we say together the words of the Lord's Prayer? Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. 
your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. And sorry, I mixed the traditional and the contemporary version of that as I was saying it. So the Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. So just one final thing, and you may have seen it in the uh, Rector's Update um, new sheet that goes out every week. Um, just this idea of 2020. Um, so my encouragement to you is set an alarm on your phone or whatever device you have for 20 past eight in the evening and simply pray that God would give us a vision and a breakthrough in that vision. And that may be a vision in our own lives for where God is directing us. Maybe a vision for your church. It may be a vision for our community. But God will just give you a vision and lay it upon your heart that you might then pray that into being for yourself, for somebody you know, as if for your church, for our community. So that's our 2020 vision. So please do set an alarm. So please do like, share, subscribe. Keep safe. Keep in contact with one another and keep close to God in prayer. Till next time. Bye bye.